Today we will have a look at the following calculus problem. We have a piecewise defined function f of x is equal to x squared if x is a rational number and 0 if x is an irrational number. And we have to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is equal to 0. And we will use the epsilon delta definition of a limit in this solution. So we'll set epsilon to be a positive real number, so have epsilon in the reals and epsilon greater than zero. And our goal is to find a delta in the reals and is positive such that if the absolute value of x minus zero is, is greater than zero and less than delta, it means that the absolute value of f of x minus zero is less than epsilon. So we can see this zero over here refers to uh, meaning that x is approaching zero in the limit over here. And this zero over here refers to we are trying to prove we're trying to prove the limit equals zero. So this zero here is to try to is Uh, we are trying to use the epsilon delta definition to show the limit is equal to zero, and that's why we substitute zero here. So now down here, we have note that for all real numbers x, um, the square of x is always at least zero, so that's it's not negative. So this allows us to bound f of x as at least 0 and at most x squared. And this is because f of x is either equal to x squared or 0. So since x squared is at least 0, then f of x is going to be at least 0 and at most x squared. And this also gives us the absolute value of f of x is always at most x squared for all reals x. Next step is to set delta equal to the square root of epsilon and we'll show uh, this satisfies this condition here which is our original goal. So now if x minus 0 absolute value is greater than 0 and less than delta, since delta is equal to square root of epsilon and we have the absolute value of x is greater than zero and less than the square root, of, square root of epsilon. So now we can square uh, all the sides of the inequalities to get the absolute value of x squared is greater than zero and less than the square root of epsilon squared. And this gives us x squared is greater than zero and less than epsilon. And this is because x squared is the same as the absolute value of x all squared. And now this is where the observation of f of x being between 0 and x squared is where it comes in. So now we can squeeze the f of x between the 0 and the x squared here. And this is also less than epsilon. So this gives us the absolute value of f of x is also between 0 and x squared and x squared is less than epsilon. This is because since f of x was at least zero, then f of x is the same as the absolute value of f of x. And this is also the same as f of x minus zero and the absolute value, and this is less than epsilon. And we can see uh, the thing we have over here is the same as what our goal was over here. So our goal was proving the absolute value of f of x minus zero is less than epsilon, and we successfully done it over here after all these steps. So we finally reached uh, our goal. Okay, and this completes the proof using the epsilon delta definition of a limit that limit of x going to zero of f of x is equal to zero. This completes our proof. Okay, so. Hope you enjoyed 
this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.